In this video we will explain the camera settings so you can acquire better datasets. To join our global pilot network, register at inflights.com slash pilot. Photogrammetry is all about the images. The better the image quality, the better the end result. So here is what we will cover in this video. What kind of images are best for photogrammetry? How to check the quality of images? Short introduction shutter speed and motion blur, aperture, depth of field and image sharpness, ISO and ISO noise, exposure value compensation, dynamic range in photography. How does light conditions affect the exposure? A couple of important definitions. What is the image exposure, metering mode, focal length and field of view? Zoom lenses versus prime lenses. RAW versus JPEG file formats. So what is the perfect dataset in terms of image quality? You want your images to be properly exposed. This means just the right amount of light will be gathered by the sensor. Consistently exposed images. The exposure of the entire dataset should be consistent. Sometimes on auto settings the drone will change the aperture or shutter speed value and this will cause some images to be a little darker and some images to be a little brighter. Properly focused, out of focus images will produce very bad drone mapping software outputs. Not blurry. Image blur will occur in low shutter speeds on a moving drone. Low ISO noise level. Native ISO, usually around 100, produces the lowest amount of noise. Images without solid white highlights or black shadows. You want to adjust all parameters in order to avoid underexposed or overexposed area. You want your camera to use full sensor size. Use the full aspect ratio of your sensor. Images within aperture sweet spot for adequate depth of field and sharpness. So how to check some of those features? There are few ways of doing it. The processing software looks at the images at the pixel level. So to check the quality of images on your computer, just zoom in all the way and check the images for softness, blur and noise. Especially check on the side of your images. InFlight's free photogrammetry data checker measures the blur parameter automatically for the drone mapping projects. It also marks the blurry images on the map. Try it out and let us know what you think. In photogrammetry, we take hundreds or even tens of thousands of images. The drone is mostly just a flying platform for your camera. It is important to get to know your camera's settings because the auto mode is not enough in some cases, especially for low light conditions, high contrast situations and fast changing weather. Also, if you have a low quality dataset, there is little you can do later in the processing software. Most times you will have to refly the mission. For drone mapping, you will need to understand a few basic photogrammetry concepts, like exposure triangle. The exposure triangle is a relationship between three variables, ISO, aperture and shutter speed. Together they determine the exposure of the image and its overall appearance. Basically, the exposure means how bright the image is. If you change one variable, you'll have to change one or the other two to maintain the same exposure. Let's look at each variable individually. Shutter speed is the length of time the shutter remains open, allowing light to hit the sensor. It is measured in seconds usually the fractions of a second. The slower the shutter speed, the brighter the image is. But there is a downside to slow shutter speed. Slower shutter speed on a moving drone makes your images blurry. Blurry images are bad for photogrammetry. To get sharp and clean images, keep your shutter speed fast. For most photogrammetry projects, don't use shutter speed lower than 1 120th of a second because it will cause blurry images. Zoom in to a pixel level if you want to inspect the image blur. The drone is usually moving at a constant speed throughout the mission, so to avoid motion blur, you want the shutter speed to be fast. How fast? This depends on the ground sampling distance and the drone's speed. 
To calculate the motion blur parameter, you just multiply the drone speed in meters per second by shutter speed. Keep your motion blur value as low as possible. Do not exceed the motion blur parameter more than two times of the GSD of the project. The faster your drone speed is, the faster the shutter speed should be set. For example, if the camera has 1 100th of a second exposure time and the drone is flying at 10 meters per second, the motion blur is going to be 10 centimeters. Aperture is the size of the hole in the lens that allows the light in. It is measured in f-stops. The bigger the hole, the brighter the image is. For photogrammetry, the downside is a shallow depth of field and loss of clarity towards the corners and sides of the image. The depth of field is the distance between nearest and the farthest objects that are in focus. Depth of field depends on the focal length, aperture size, distance from the camera to the object it is focused on. The closer the camera is to the object, the shallower the depth of field. This means the lower you fly your drone, the shallower depth of field you will get at a given f-stop number. This is why you should increase the f-stop value for lower altitude missions and oblique images, for example mapping a building facades from orbits. It is worth mentioning that the area that is in focus and sharp is not centered around the point you focused on. Actually, two-thirds of depth of field area is behind where you focused your camera, and one-third of the depth of field is in front. Smaller aperture holes, so bigger f-stop numbers, will produce sharper images and greater depth of field. The depth of field is important for mapping uneven terrain, for example cities with tall buildings, and for oblique images, especially orbits around a building. Shallow depth of field may cause a part of image to be out of focus. Image sharpness is the loss of image quality towards sides and corners of the image. Most lenses tend to be the sharpest at f5.6 or f8, but sometimes it is wise to set even smaller aperture. For example, when you map a single building and the drone is close to it, then you want your aperture value to be at least f8 or more. For DJI Phantom 4 Pro, the f5.6 seems to give the sharpest image. ISO value determines the sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the ISO value, the more sensitive the sensor is, thus producing a brighter image. The downside to increasing the ISO value is the ISO noise. ISO noise makes your image grainy and unclear. The higher the ISO value, the more noise is introduced in your picture. ISO noise is bad for photogrammetry. Also, the higher the ISO, the less dynamic range. The basic rule of thumb is to keep your ISO close to native ISO of your camera. In most cases, it is ISO 100. The bigger the camera sensor, the less noise at a given ISO value. For example, the full-frame camera sensor will have almost two times less noise at the same ISO value as the camera with a PSC sensor. The pixel size on the sensor also impacts the amount of ISO noise. For example, Sony A7R Mark III, which is 42 megapixel sensor, will show more noise than Sony A7 Mark III, which is 24 megapixel sensor. Because the sensor size is the same, but the pixel size is different. The newer the sensor, the less noise on the same ISO settings. For example, Sony 7 Mark I will show more noise at the same ISO value than the newer Sony A7 Mark III. For most non-drone cameras, like Sony A7 series, the ISO value below the native ISO does not eliminate the noise. For example, the extended ISO 50 will have the same amount of noise as the native ISO 100. For the best results, keep the ISO value fixed throughout the mission and as low as possible. For DJI Phantom 4 RTK, always keep your ISO at 100. For DJI P1 camera, always keep your ISO below 500. Do not denoise your images in post-processing software. 
It can cause misalignments of the images and bad quality results. EV or exposure value compensation is the camera setting that controls overall exposure of the images. For example, when you are in auto mode, this setting will control shutter speed, aperture and ISO if the ISO is set to auto as well. So why do we need it? Because the camera sometimes makes incorrect assumptions about the amount of light in the photo. EV compensation does not work in full manual mode. The priority modes will let you set the fixed value for only one variable, aperture or shutter speed. For example, in shutter priority mode, you can set the shutter speed and let the camera control the aperture value and ISO if the ISO value is also not fixed in a separate setting. By changing the EV setting, you will tell the camera to take brighter or darker images than it normally would by a set value. In photogrammetry, we often use it to underexpose the image and make the shutter speed faster and aperture value greater for better quality images. Dynamic range in photography is the difference between darkest and lightest tones in an image. Digital cameras have narrower dynamic range than the human eye. It means that the cameras don't capture all the information in the bright areas and in the dark areas compared to what you see. Because of that, sometimes you'll have to choose between overexposing and underexposing parts of your picture. The dynamic range is measured in stops. Camera manufacturers often mention that in camera specifications. There is another thing that influences the exposure. It is the light. In drone mapping, it depends on the weather conditions. More light is usually better for standard drone mapping. It will let you set faster shutter speed and smaller aperture. However, strong light causes what we call hard shadows. Those are very dark shadows that create noise in photogrammetry deliverables. This can be fixed in third-party apps for drone mapping data post-processing. But if you want a good-looking 3D model, then you want overcast weather to avoid hard shadows. This is important for real estate projects. Wow, we've got the exposure triangle covered. Be sure to watch this video again sometime from now. Now let's talk about definitions you will need for this part of the video. Image exposure is the amount of light hitting the sensor, so the brightness of your image. Underexposed images look too dark because not enough light was gathered by the sensor. The shadowed areas are too dark or just solid black. Overexposed images look too bright because too much light was gathered by the sensor. The bright areas or highlights are too bright or just solid white. Overexposed and underexposed parts of your image are not readable by any photogrammetry software and will cause point cloud noise. The correct exposure is what you are looking for. It is just the right amount of light. Metering mode defines the area of the image that is used to calculate the image exposure in shutter priority, aperture priority and auto mode. It can be wide, small or very small. We suggest using wide metering mode for almost all drone mapping projects, except for real estate mapping. For handheld camera images, you should consider switching to small area metering mode and making sure that the area stays on the object you want to scan. In photogrammetry, you can use point metering mode for small objects. For example, to map a statue. The focal length of the lens is basically its magnification. It impacts the field of view of your camera, so how much of the scene is captured. The longer the focal length, the greater magnification is. The shorter the focal length, the wider the field of view and lower magnification level. Field of view depends on the focal length and the sensor size. For example, DJI Phantom 4 Pro 8.8mm lens on 1 inch sensor is equivalent to 24mm lens on a full frame 35mm sensor. The longer focal length lens will also let you fly higher while maintaining the same ground sampling distance. The longer focal length lens gives shallow depth of field. Try to avoid ultra-wide lenses, 
These are lenses below 22 mm on 35 sensor equivalent. Ultra wide lenses cause distortions around the edges of the image. Most photogrammetry software can undistort images with exception of areas around the edges of the image. There are two types of lenses, zoom lenses with variable focus length and prime lenses with fixed focal length. Zoom lenses will let you choose the magnification level in the range. The prime lenses often have one magnification level. Usually the prime lenses are sharper, lighter and more compact. Most photogrammetry software misaligns the images when the focal length is changed. Since modern cameras were invented, the RAW file format began available. Nowadays you can find a lot of heated debates around which one is better. Here's the short version. Most drones support two types of file formats, RAW and JPEG. RAW files are bigger than JPEG, but RAW files offer more post-processing possibilities. And this means more information in highlights and shadows. The RAW files contain all the information that the camera sensor gathered. Sometimes, especially for DJI drones, the RAW file format requires it to be processed, to be displayed correctly and converted to TIFF file format. For example, in Adobe Photoshop, the RAW and TIFF file formats are much bigger than a simple JPEG. And this means that PC storage can be a problem. Also, RAW file format will let you set the white balance in post-processing easier. When shooting JPEG, always set the white balance to a fixed value, or a sunny or cloudy preset. The JPEG is a compressed image format, and this means some of the information is lost and cannot be recovered later. On DJI drones like Phantom 4 Pro, there is a big downside to shooting RAW images. The time needed to save one image is 5 seconds for raw image and 2 seconds to save a JPEG. This is important for mapping missions. The drone will have to fly almost 3 times slower for raw file format than it normally would for JPEG. We often shoot raw when mapping a single building or a statue because later we have more processing options and the final 3D model texture looks better. The basic rule of thumb is to use raw file format when you care about texture quality more than the flight time. The place where you focus your camera is also important. There are three main focus modes. Single focus, where the camera focuses only once, continuous focus, where the camera adapts to the changing environment, and manual focus when you specify the focus distance. Using continuous focus, the camera sometimes can make incorrect assumptions. This is why for flat terrain mapping, you should always set it to a single focus or manual focus, except mapping a hilly terrain without terrain mapping feature or city mapping. In those cases, set the camera focus to continuous focus mode. When focusing manually, you should usually set the focus to infinity position or one step before infinity. It is recommended to do a couple of tests for your camera. That's it for this video. Please watch this video a few times and see you in the next one. To join our global pilot network, register at inflights.com pilot.